One way in which the examiner can test your understanding of the subject quite thoroughly is rather than simply asking us to calculate things in the order that we are used to, as a straightforward variance calculation would give us, here we're asked to work backwards. So the variances have already been calculated for us in this task, but we're asked a series of questions testing our understanding of how they were calculated and our ability to find missing pieces of the puzzle. The first thing that we're asked for is the costing technique that's been used. So we need to decide, is it absorption or marginal costing? Well, the big clue here is how those fixed overheads have been dealt with. Under marginal costing, we would simply look at the difference between the budgeted and actual overheads. But because we're dealing with an absorption costing system, we have not just the expenditure, but also a volume variance for fixed overheads. The presence of that volume variance for fixed overheads tells me clearly that this is an absorption costing system. Next, we have to compare the actual selling price to the standard. So I'm going to look at my sales price variance to tell me the difference. We can see the sales price variance is 10,000 favourable. That means we've set our selling price higher than we had planned to. So we can select the appropriate option from the drop down list. This was higher than. The third thing that we're asked for is to look at the units sold being higher or lower than budgeted and by how many units. So let's have a look at our sales volume variance to give us some indication. The sales volume variance in this case is 50,000 adverse. We know that the volume variance would have been calculated by looking at the difference between the units that we budgeted to sell and the units we actually sold and multiplying that by the standard profit per unit. Given the standard profit per unit is $50 a unit, we can see we were looking at a difference of 1000 units. As that's an adverse variance, it means we must have sold less than we planned to. The fourth part of the requirement asks us to calculate the actual revenue. So we'll need to see how many units did we sell and what happened with our sales price. One way we can find the budgeted level of sales is by looking at our budgeted profit. We budgeted to have profit of half a million. If that's based on a profit of 50 per unit, we can see how many units we were trying to sell. We must have been looking at selling 10,000 units. So if we budgeted to sell 10,000 units, and we know from our volume variance that we sold 1,000 less than we planned to, we can see the actual sales must have been 9,000 units. If we were selling them at the standard price of $100 each, that would give us a revenue figure for the actual volume at the standard price of 900,000. However, we know that there was a price variance of 10,000 favourable variants. So that must give us our total actual revenue of 910,000. Next, we need to compare the actual production to the budgeted production. Make sure that you don't make the assumption that sales and production will be at the same level. They may well be different. So we need to pick up the figures that are relevant to production. 
There's no obvious information about our actual or planned levels of production, but we do have our fixed overhead volume variance, which will be made up of the difference between the budgeted and actual level of production multiplied by the fixed overhead rate of $10 per unit. If I simply divide my variance then by the $10 per unit, I can see I must be dealing with a difference of 100 units. As it's an adverse variance, it looks like we've produced less than we planned to. Finally, for our material costs, we need to consider the decision to pay more or less than the standard price and the effect that there's been in terms of the usage of material. So let's have a look at our price. We can see there's a favourable price variance. So that suggests we have paid less than the standard price. In terms of our usage variance, we have an adverse variance of 8,000. So that tells us we've been using more material than the standard recommends. The question is, how much more have we been using? Well, we know the standard cost per kilogram is $10 per kilogram. So if I divide my variance by the cost per kilogram, I can see the difference in terms of kilograms must have been 800. It's an adverse variance, so as we said, we used more than the standard.